What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 24 of the Reply Line. So happy to be doing this again and again for the 24th time. This is fantastic. I'm just glad that I am kind of staying with it and getting it going. So today, uh, we are going to be answering a few questions that I get in questions and comments and things like that from some of my awesome viewers. And then we are going to actually go live and see if anyone is around and has a question, anyone who's watching live, and we're going to see if we can call them on the phone and say what's up and answer their question to kind of give them a little more a uh, little more in-depth a little more personal uh, answer to their question all right so we're gonna answer some questions about like some overrated pieces of gear and then we're gonna talk about the stability of my Ginu and can you spearfish from it as someone so uh, politely and awesomely asked so uh, we've got a few folks here in the chat uh, thank you all for coming and thank you all for watching everyone who is live if you're not live did, if you missed the show be sure you have your notifications enabled click the bell and be sure that your you know all the notifications on your phone like for your apps are allowed for YouTube so you can be notified whenever I go live so that if you have a good question maybe I can call you and we can chat about it and figure things out for you all right so what's up toxic banana Joe is that a uh, no, I think it's a different Joe and then what's up Earl Loggins and we have the Earth Lando show Hey, oh wow, Earth, Earth Lando said, Trip inspired me to start my channel. That is fantastic, Lando. I'm so happy that you started your channel. And I wish your channel the best. And let me just tell you, it's a it can be a long road. Granted, there are some folks who uh, blow up pretty quickly, but it can be a long road, all right? So keep going and just create good, clean content that you enjoy watching and other people will uh They'll, they'll like it too, all right? So we got uh, Mr. Vinny Ninja. We got Corey Dunnigan. Uh, everyone, thank y'all for tuning in. All right, let's get to these questions, all right? So our first question is from Ninja Please. Interesting name, Ninja Please. <laughs> Ninja Please says, what do you think is your most overrated piece of gear? In general, like buyer's remorse. Hmm, now this is a pretty interesting question. This is one I haven't ever heard before. And I kind of like it. And it made me, you know, it caused me to have to think about, okay, what is my most overrated piece of gear? So I thought, okay, uh, let's, you know, it's probably not going to be a piece of gear that I use any longer. And it's probably going to be something that, you know, I thought was going to be awesome and just solve this huge problem or, you know, or make something easier that I had, right? Something that goes along with adventure. And so I was like, okay, let's just go look in my gear closet and see what all kind of stuff I don't use anymore. And it didn't take me long. And I found something. I was like, okay this is it this is my most overrated piece of gear because I thought it was gonna be something awesome and was gonna solve this incredible problem that I had that everyone has really but it didn't quite work out how I thought it was going to be All right, so what is it well it is my rhino skin uh, uh, mosquito proof clothing All right you guys remember this stuff All right let me show it to you um, you know I, I got it a while back here you go. That's me in the rhino skin at Phillips Inlet, uh, kind of sneaking out of my out of my hammock at night. But you can see I'm just wearing this uh, this long john type stuff, and it's supposed to you know uh, protect you from the mosquitoes, not let mosquitoes bite through the fabric. Now, long story short, it doesn't work 100%. It works pretty well. I mean, it's better than nothing, but I don't know if it's better than just a inexpensive or you know moderately priced uh, you know like Under Armour type suit you know thermal underwear but and you know so whenever I got it or whenever I saw it, I was like oh my gosh this is this really thin material that I can wear that mosquitoes won't bite through so when it's hot outside I can wear this stuff I won't be very hot and the bugs can't get me I don't need bug spray or any of that good stuff I can just hang out in this green suit all night and be good to go well, it didn't quite work out that way after I you know after the product was on its way to my house I was on their website doing a little more reading and it said this product only works when or well, I want to say that it said something like you know uh, must be used with another layer of clothing on top and as soon as I read that I'm thinking oh wait a minute hold on if I was gonna wear two layers of clothing as it was bugs aren't gonna bite me anyway right most of the time right so I thought, okay, well, I'm still going to give it a shot and see if it works. So I did. I wore it on three or four adventures when the mosquitoes were certainly out. And it helped. It really did help. It didn't make it perfect. I still got a few mosquito bites. But all in all, I stopped wearing it. Right? So obviously, it, doesn't, it didn't work as I expected it to. Now, if it would have, I'd still be wearing that junk 
all the time because it was comfortable, it was cool, it wasn't very hot. So, you know, it's, I don't know, I really wish it, wish that it would have worked. I really, really do wish it would have worked. It would have been so awesome. So this is my most overrated piece of gear. The Rhino Skin Thermal uh, Underwear Mosquito Proof Armor, right? Didn't quite work as I wanted it to. But oh well, thank you Rhino Skin still for sending it to me because, I mean, we gave it a try. We had a little fun with your product. It just, uh... This wasn't exactly what I was I was hoping for. All right, so next question is from Nix North. Nix North asks, he says, but could you spearfish from it? And he's talking about my Ginu, you know, the Ginu Classic that I had. He's commenting on one of those videos. He said, you know, can you dive out and get back in the boat out on the water? So I think what he's really asking is, you know, is the stability of the boat good enough so that you can get out in deep water and climb over the side without tipping the boat or the boat taking on water? Now, yes, absolutely. Now, here is the picture of my Ginu that I had. Absolutely love the Ginu. This is the this is the video where me and Parker were out testing the PFDs. That was so much fun. I really, 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 really enjoyed that day because you know whenever I was younger, you know we'd be you know, just a bunch of high schoolers or college kids down at the lake or something at the river, we'd just be, you know, skip back down the river and we'd just jump out of the boat, right? You know, you know, you know how it is, just, you know, being crazy and stupid. So I was kind of reliving, you know, those times when I was jumping off the boat with a PFD on. Granted, when we were younger, we weren't wearing PFDs, we just jumped off the boat anyway. But anyways, so back to the Ginu and its stability. Now, it is an extremely stable boat. Very, 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 like, incredibly stable. I love the Ginu, absolutely, and I did climb out of it many times from deeper water into the boat, you know, just kind of laying over the side and nothing ever happened. The boat never even wanted to flip. You know, I, I'm pretty sure I could stand on the side of it and it would not flip. I mean, well, granted, you wouldn't want to do that in much chop because you know, the freeboard's kind of low on it, especially when you're on one side and it's tipping, you're getting close to the water, you know, so... You know, but really and truly, if it's flat out, sure, you can get out of it uh, as much as you want and get in and out, and you're not going to have to worry about tipping the boat or, you know, swamping the boat. But now, let's say you're spearfishing, and it gets a little choppy, and you're out, like, in the Gulf or, you know, some open waters where some chop can build up. Now, that is the only time when I would say you may not want a Ginu because, you know, if you guys know anything about Ginus, they can swamp pretty easily, and a lot of people sink them, like, kind of regularly. You can go over to the Ginu Holics. Uh, Facebook group and get on there and literally this morning I saw like uh, two or three people who were bailing out their Ginus and you know some of them had sunk their Ginus and stuff because they will sink easily because you know, they don't have much freeboard they don't really ride up over waves and you know one wave can swamp one of those if you're not handling the boat properly now I did take my Ginu through some nonsense through some really bad chop once and then through some moderate chop for like 26 miles once and uh, uh, there were a couple times when, or there was one time I actually put my life jacket on because I'm like, okay, all right, this might not go well, so let me be prepared just in case because, you know, it's just not made for that chop. Now, it is super stable in flat water and creeks and rivers. If that was where I was going to be, I would absolutely still have the Ginu. And really and truly, I wish I had a Ginu right now because I have a trip next week where if I had that Ginu, that's absolutely what I would be doing it on. But, I don't, so I'm uh, I'm kind of a uh, I'm kind of up in arms. I don't really want to take my Kayo because I want to kind of explore some backwoods creeks and springs and stuff. Uh, so I may be trying to borrow a boat <laughs> from my father-in-law. We'll see how that goes. But long story short, the Gidu is an awesome boat, and I still wish I had it. Right. So there you go. That's the answer to that one. So all right, let's see what's going on in the chat here. Uh, let's see here, Mr. Vinyl Ninja. He doesn't have a question. Well, that's okay. Come up with a question and I'll give you a call here in just a minute. The Orlando so Show said, yes, love adventuring and storytelling, so enjoy life and sharing. Yes, absolutely, enjoy life and sharing. If you do that on your channel, if you enjoy things, make things fun, and you share it, kind of like I do, people, well, luckily, enjoy it, right? All right, so, uh, oh, Fishing with Nate, do I still go to Selma? Yes, we do still go to Selma. Uh, granted, we haven't been very, very much since COVID and all started, but yes, we were there last weekend. Uh, let's see here. What's up, the Welsh Kayaker? And what is up, Peter from Denmark? I know it's late over there, Peter. Thanks for tuning in, man. All right, so you guys, thank you all for all these questions. Now we're going to get into the part of the show where if you have a question, you can drop your cell phone number 
in the chat here and I'm gonna give you a call on Skype right here from my computer and you're gonna get on here live with me and we're gonna chat a little bit I'm gonna answer your question so if y'all do have a question I don't know if you do this is Sunday there may or may not be many people here watching or I know there's a lot of people who are like uh, I'm not putting my cell phone number out in the internet and which I understand so uh, if you guys are in that boat you don't like putting your cell phone number in you can send it to me in an email if and then I'm gonna put your cell phone number in a database right basically on my computer and then once you come into the next reply line if you say hey trip uh, you know I sent you my cell phone number give me a call I have my question ready I will call you that way okay so if you guys want to do that you are welcome to so if all right so right now if you have a question you want me to call you drop your cell phone number in if you don't want me to call you you can still just drop your question in the chat and we will answer your question all right so anyone want me to call you because I really do like calling people it's a lot of fun because I've never met you folks and you know I like you know messing with people janking with folks laughing with folks mmm got a little tea here you ever had throat coat it's a delicious delicious tea all right here we go let's see here Corey Dunnigan said man I was in Orange Beach a few weeks ago and wanted to paddle board to Robinson Island but I lost my fin while I was out Corey that is no good that's no good uh, what kind of board did you have and what kind of fin attachment did you have I want to know that and do you know how you lost your fin all right well let me know that really quick uh, Orange Beach you guys that is such an awesome spot Robinson Island that's the place where I was uh, camping on the little island that's where I almost got struck by lightning uh, I mean but I've had a lot of fun in Orange Beach in that area that's close to Florabama you know it's right there they have a beautiful pass whenever it's nice and calm you can do some good snorkeling you know I did it with a I saw a sea turtle when I was there very awesome very cool spot and those little spoil islands just inside the pass are absolutely gorgeous I mean it is so cool really love that area so Corey it sucks that you uh that you lost your fin man I hope you can find a replacement fin because that can be a tough thing sometimes like you know one of the reasons that I recommend people buying a little bit better brand of paddleboard you know from like a reputable company where you can order from the company is because what if you do lose a fin because I actually one of the fins on one of my boards was lost one time uh, by someone who borrowed my board and it was it took forever for me to get the new fin back right because it was some Chinese company on Amazon that you know you can you, you could buy the board sure but if you ever lose something like the fin or the pump or whatever it's hard to buy replacement parts for that specific board so that's why I try to suggest everybody you know try and buy from somewhere where you can get these replacement parts you know like Blackfin for instance you know because you guys know how much I love Blackfin you know they're a it's an American company they're in Jacksonville Florida and you know granted the boards are made overseas just like pretty much all paddleboard brands except for I think Red Paddle Co uh, and actually boat their their boards are made overseas their inflatable boards are made overseas too so you know everyone gets their boards made probably from the same factory the same handful of factories and they're sent over then they distribute them or at least that's what boat and what Blackfin does and so they also have a bunch of spare parts you can contact them you can you know if you have a warranty claim you can get up with them and actually get your board fixed or they'll send you a new board or whatever uh, you know is warranted from that uh, issue that has arisen right or if you lost your fin you can get on there and you can order a new fin or if you want to you can order like they have different types of fins like a river fin or a, uh, a race fin or a touring fin they got all these funky surf fin whatever you want so all right well you guys I know it's Sunday I'm not seeing any, any uh, questions come up here in the chat so Oh yeah, and also uh, there was something ah, I forgot last time. Uh, people were trying to put their cell phone numbers in, and I couldn't see those messages because something YouTube is doing. They're not letting cell phone numbers come through the chat. So I forgot I should have mentioned this. So you may have to type it in, like you're know, typing the actual number, like Z E R O for zero. I know it sucks. Uh, I need to figure out a way around that. You know, I need to make a note so I can research that. But anyways, guys, I just want to come on here and do a quick reply line for you folks. Uh, and let's see here. Oh, we just got a question come in from Jason Barber. All right, I mean Jackson Barber. He says, "Hey Trip, newer to the channel. What's up? Welcome to the channel. Glad you're new. Love having new people around here." Uh, as he said, "I was wondering what emergency radio slash device you use and recommend when you're out on longer trips. Just got a boat and trying to figure out what to get. Well, you know, typically, 
you know, the first go-to radio is going to be your cell phone, right? You know, everyone carries a cell phone, and you know, if you're not out in the middle of just, you know, the total boondocks, you know, you're going to have service in most places. So that is your first line of defense, and then secondly, I usually I have a small handheld VHF. It's like a, a I don't know, Simrad or something. I don't know what it is, but it's a you know waterproof floating VHF radio. They're like $45, $65. dollars. They're not very expensive, and they hold a charge forever. So you can grab yourself one of those and just have that ready. Now I don't always carry it on me, but you know I will carry it in a handy location, like you know. I will usually put all of my emergency stuff, which really isn't much, in one area. So if something does happen, I know I'm going to go there and grab it. You know, that's where my PFD is, it's where my radio is, and so I'll have all that on me if it, the going gets rough, right? So you know, just have that VHF radio on you and use it. Now, now that thing is, you know, if you get far offshore, it's not going to work because like the way they actually work is you have to be within line of sight from a tower, like literally line of sight from a tower. <clears throat> so. You know, if you're down in the water or if you're at water level or standing in the boat, you know, your radio is what, five feet high, six feet high tops, then, you know, you're not going to have a great range. I forgot what it is. It's like 15 miles or I don't know, it could be 30 miles, something like that. It's not very far, but that would be my best suggestion. Now, I also do have one of those spot little GPS beacon, little uh, locator things that I got years ago when I went down to the Florida Keys. And I had it activated. You have to pay like a monthly or yearly subscription for it, and it's not exactly cheap. So I had it activated when I did that trip because that was one of my first like big adventures, and I haven't ever activated it since then. Haven't even used it since then. But you know they are pretty cool because you can actually you know you can send a text message or you can you know uh, you can have a little website set up and a little link that people can go to, and they can track you on like Google Maps essentially and see exactly where you are. You know you can have it where you check in every 15 minutes. It pings that website, and people can say, "Okay, this is where Jackson is. He's right here." So that is an option. You know, it really and truly, it just it. I don't know. It, it depends on what kind of family you're leaving at home, how worried they are, right? And it also depends on you know uh, how wild and crazy your adventure is. You know, if you're just close to home, you don't need one of those things. But you know, but if you're going out like I was going in the Florida Keys, where if something does happen, you could get you know pushed out to sea. <laughs> You know that's the reason that I had that thing, but other than that, you know VHF radio, cell phone, I say you're good to go. You know, or you can get an EPIRB. You know, if you, you know, which is, I don't believe those have a monthly subscription, and it's just a satellite beacon. You activate it whenever you know the junk hits the fan, and then help will be on the way. Uh, so there you go. That's what I would suggest. All right, let's see. It looks like we have a phone number in here. All right, Corey, I'm going to call you in just a minute. Let's see here. Carter Burnett said, I'm coming to Orange Beach in December. Sweet. Maybe you'll see me. You never know. You never know. Um, December, Orange Beach. Uh, no, I think in December I'm going to be on the Flint River, the 1st of December. But uh, you never know, Carter. I'm making a wild herring. Well, because, yeah, my new motor for the boats will be coming in in December, so you never know. I may be down there uh, breaking her in, right? Uh, let's see, Ram13 said, hey Trip, love your channel, looking forward to your next sub trip, any planned? No, I don't have a sub trip planned. Uh, I have my next two kind of bigger trips planned, my overnighters planned. One is the uh, the first of this month, or of next month, so next Sunday, a week from now, I'll be headed out to the, like the Choctahatchee River area uh, on a skiff to explore some springs. and. Uh, I'm I'm not going solo, but you guys are gonna have to stay tuned to see who I'm going with. So uh, should be a pretty good video though. So y'all tune in for that. Uh, if you want to really, you know, if you want to get an early sneak peek and not to wait for the video to come out, check my Instagram story. All right, all right. Let's see here. So Corey Dunnigan, we're gonna give you a call. And Ken Delaney, what's up, Ken? He just sent in a five dollar super chat. Thank you so much, Ken. What a gentleman. I appreciate that so much. Thank you for helping support the channel, man. All right, Corey. Done again. I gotta put your phone number in here, man. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Four, four, zero. I'm trying not to say them all out loud so that I'm probably calling the wrong person. Wouldn't that be hilarious if I called the wrong person? Uh, yeah, throat coat is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, here we go. We got a question. Corey, I'm about to give you a call, man. You better answer. All right. Here we go. We're calling Corey. You guys let me know if y'all can hear us. It's 
ringing. It's ringing. It's ringing. You're welcome, Hi, Jackson. I'm sorry, I can't come to the phone right now. Please leave a message, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, I bet you that's the wrong number. <laughs> Let me go back and see if that was the right number. Where could I see his number? Four oh five. All right, four zero five. Oh, I got it wrong. <laughs> I love it. All right. Wait, don't call him again. Forgive me, you guys. See, this is why I need an assistant. All right, we're going <laughs> to... All right. Hold on. We got to get this right. New contact. Add a phone number. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't answer. Wouldn't that have been hilarious <laughs> if they answered? All right. Four. I gotta say it out loud. Zero, five, five, four, nine, four, five, eight, six. Geez, that's a lot of numbers. All right, we're trying again. Corey, number two. Here we go. Let's see who answers this time. <laughs> oh, what's up, Jerry? Old worker, old woodworking friend there. Let's see if we get it right. Hello. What's up? Is this Corey? Yeah, man. What's no, up? Wrong number. <laughs> yeah, man. No kidding. Oh well. I I just I really hate that they didn't answer. It would have been a lot of fun if they would have answered. But anyways, <laughs> it would have been entertaining for the rest of us. Exactly right. How are things going for you? Oh, not too bad, man. I'm just hanging out here at an open house. Perfect. Are you buying or selling? Uh, I'm actually a realtor. Um, just hanging out here in Oklahoma. Nice, man. Good deal. All right. So you got a question, man? Oh yeah, I just I was saying you could call me uh, in relation to the paddleboard. I, I have a Go Plus paddleboard. Right. Uh, you were asking about what kind of paddleboard I had. Yes, I lost the fin there in Orange Beach. Yeah, so like, did you were you paddling the board when you lost the fin? I was, man. I was out um, right there, uh, close to the jetty. Yeah, I was paddling, and man, all of a sudden I'm like, man, this thing's not steering right. Something's wrong, and I thought, you know, maybe it was just me. But yeah. a little bit goes by, and I'm like, I got to get out of the water and check this thing out. So I get out and turn it over, and my fin's gone. And I'm like, oh my gosh! So I walked the beach for probably oh. a mile looking to see if it had washed up somewhere. I never found it. Yeah, it, it probably sinks as it dense as that of that as that plastic is. It probably sinks. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's plastic, and and you're right, it's pretty dense. Yeah. All right. And so so let me ask you this: what what type of mechanism? You know, uh, did it have that locked it in? Was it just like it just slid in and locked well, in? Yeah, it's it's not the one that Trip Smith recommends. <laughs> it's not the U.S. fin box, which is okay. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it's which I hey man, I got seven kids, so I can't afford the black fin yet. Someday. I feel you. I feel you. Someday. <laughs> but uh, no, it's got the little plastic clip thing that kind of just clips into place. If you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's like a slide-in clip that's on a little string. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. it just slides in and pops. Yeah, it pops into place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, actually, funny thing is, is black fin actually uh, switched to a similar style fin system as that this year, or actually, in, I think maybe in 2019. And I actually, I I spoke with the owner of it, and you know, asked him about you know what prompted that change, and he said, you know, really and truly, you know, um, they've they kind of tested out this new uh, fin locking system, and I think they might have made a few tweaks to how they did it to kind of make it their own a little bit, you know how companies do, and yeah, and and, and so I was like, you know, all right, cool, you know, and they they sent me that the paddleboard that I gave away at Rockadoc, and I of course I aired it up in my in my living room, put it together, had to check it out, of course, and it was the thing was sweet, right? But um, and whenever I put the fin in, you know, I was checking it, you know, how loose it was, and really and truly. It's pretty good, so you know. Really, all in all, you know, I don't, I don't think you necessarily have to be married to the U.S. fin box, you know, because really, you know, the only time you really need it is if you want to upgrade your fin, get a new race fin, yeah, get a river fin, you know, or or whatever. But you know, as long as you don't lose your fin, you're gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've been looking, I've I've been shopping and finding some supposed replacements i guess i won't know if it actually works until i get it but see exactly uh, as far as i can tell online i can find a, a good replacement for it so i'm hopeful that that's actually going to fit okay yeah, um, yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm kind of wondering if maybe I got something like when I locked it into place, maybe I got some sand or something that kind of kept it from locking all the way. It, probably so. Yeah. You probably just weren't able to push it all the way through there and it just didn't pop up to stop it from sliding back out more than likely. Yeah, for so. sure. But, uh, yeah, man, it, it was just a bad day. And I was like, well, I guess I'm done with the paddle board. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's incredible how much or how horrible they paddle without a fin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, every single stroke, I was turning the opposite direction. Oh, yeah. And I was like, something's not right here. Oh, yeah. 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 I know at, at Rockadock on the night paddle that we did on Sunday or Sunday morning, I didn't have my fin on my board and it was horrible. You know, but whatever. You know, we were we weren't going very very far. But you know, when when you take that fin off, it's pretty amazing. But but really and truly, that just kind of tells you one of the advantages of a paddleboard. You know, typically, you know, a kayak doesn't really have a fin. But when you paddle them, they say semi straight, right? But whenever you yeah, uh, you know, whenever you don't have a fin on a on a paddleboard, they're going to turn back and forth. So if you if we think about it, why is that? Well, that's because a kayak sits so much lower in the water and it creates so much more drag. That 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 drag is what keeps it straight, you know. Yeah. So, so. yeah, I actually do have. Uh, I mean, just kind of off the cuff, I do have a uh, uh, inflatable kayak that does have a fin on it. Okay. Enough. What but is it like a I don't sea know if eagle? You've ever used one of those? What? Yeah. No. Yeah, I... it's uh, it's one of the Intex two seaters. It's called like a Dakota K two or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, man. No, I haven't used one, but I have. I know people who have them, and I've seen them. I'm thinking, okay, that is pretty sweet. I mean, because they're they're you still know, super light. For the money, I mean, for the money, it, you probably can't beat it. I mean, nope. it's like a hundred bucks, and and you can get two people out on the water. Exactly, and it really doesn't matter what you're in the water in. As long as you're in the water or on the water. Hey, if if you're in the water, it's a good day. That's right. Cool deal. Yeah. All yeah, right. man. My wife and I were were really hoping to make it out to Rockadock, and unfortunately, we just we're not uh, not able to do it financially. I understand. But man, we're hoping to see you there next year. Hey, man. I really hope you both can come. All right. Absolutely. Thanks for the call, Trip. All right, Corey. Good talking to you, brother. All right, brother. All right. See ya. All right. Later. Cool deal. Awesome. Corey, thanks for the chat. Uh, and we, you know, see, I like doing that calling. We can kind of strike up a better conversation, kind of get in depth at these questions, and you know, hopefully, you know, provide some more value for you, good folks who are out there watching. All right, so we got a few more uh, questions coming in here. Let's see, we got John Carlo. He said, "Hey, trip question: Have you ever thought of doing a longer river trip on a jet ski?" Yes, I absolutely have thought about it. Uh, I have had a lot of people tell me, "Trip, you should get a jet ski. You should get a jet, a jet ski." And I'm thinking, okay. You know what? I probably should try to get a jet ski. And I could get a jet ski, but I haven't. And there are a few different reasons why. Uh, let's see. All right. When you're on a jet ski, you know, you can't really do much on a jet ski except jet ski, right? You know, and but it can jet ski very, very well, <laughs> right? You know, you can, you can be skint back down the river pretty nicely, cruise around the beach, and it's not going to sink, all that good stuff. But you're just kind of married to it. You're just sitting there, just riding that hog. You know, that's about all you can do on it. Uh, you know, granted, there's some people who set them up for fishing and stuff. But well, you guys all know me in fishing. You know, so far. Hopefully, I'm going to change that. But I always say that. But so no, I haven't tried to jet ski. And you know, like also on a skiff. You know, you guys have seen it. I can sleep on the skiff. You probably can't sleep on the jet ski. Uh, and also, how much gear and stuff can I carry on a jet ski? Well, probably a lot. Because there's actually people who have taken jet skis across the Gulf Stream to the Bahamas. Now, if I do a trip on a jet ski, that's going to be the trip that I do. And I would love, love, love to do that. Absolutely love to do that. And I probably will do that one day. I mean, I mean, how cool would it be? Hop on a jet ski over in Miami or wherever they start at uh, down south there. Uh, but And just scoot out across there. Be in the Bahamas in like an hour and a half, two hours. Oh my gosh, that would be so cool. So that's that's pretty high on my bucket list. I had, I've never spoke of that, but I would like to do it. But and kind of one of the reasons I haven't spoke of it because I'd like to just do it on my skiff, right? But people think you're totally crazy if you ever say you're going to do that. But you guys know me. I'm kind of I'm kind of crazy. But it will be a lot safer on a jet ski because you can't sink a jet ski. Uh, you know, essentially, it's a lot easier to sink a skiff than it is a jet ski. But so uh, yes, I have thought about it. But I've just never pulled the trigger because, you know, I don't know, I just have it because 
I need the, the skiff, the things the skiff can do versus what the jet ski can do. If I had plenty of money and plenty of space, sure, I'd have me a jet ski and we'd do some jet ski trips, but I just don't quite have that luxury. Uh, maybe one day I'll, I'll hit the lotto or I'll just go viral or something on YouTube, but as of right now, we're just skiffing it, but I'm not complaining because I love my love my skiff. Love my skiff. She's she's fancy. All right, too fancy for me, but that's all right. So is my wife. All right, let's see. Cole Scott. Uh, he has a uh, he says, "Have you heard about the Merritt's Mill Pond drawdown?" Yes, I have heard about it, and I have been seeing some footage on Facebook about it. They dropped it. What about? I don't know, some people have said different things. Six feet, five feet, uh, whatnot, which is pretty cool. I would kind of like to go down there, but I just haven't made time. But I have seen some videos where people are going up to the, the springs, like the Shangri-La spring, and kind of they can crawl up in the caves, or they go in the gator hole cave, and they're kind of checking those out, which is pretty cool. So, yes, I've heard about it. And I've also heard about there's a lot of new, uh, like this evasive or invasive grass that's growing in there that's kind of just taking up everything and blooming like crazy. So I'm kind of sad about that. And there's and it really, in the last, uh, how many years? I'm 33, so I don't know. I can't do that math. 20 years. How long was that? Yeah, no. 18 years ago, when I was down there uh, for the first time, there was not as much grass. And it was so cool because there was so much beautiful sand and so many places to swim. Well, it's kind of grown up over the years. And it's not quite as cool or it's not quite as beautiful as it used to be. But it's still a fantastic place. But I wish they could do something about the grass. Maybe they could draw it down a bunch, let some of that grass die out, dry up, and then let it raise back up. I think that would be a good thing, but I don't know. You know, I, I have seen people down there, like uh, I don't know, people who study the grass down there, digging up the grass and looking at it. You know, scientists. <laughs> and I'm like, what are y'all doing? They're like, oh, we're just checking out this grass. They wouldn't really explain a lot to me, but <laughs> hopefully they're trying to fix the grass down there because <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but it's still worth going. All right, uh, Eric Marks. He said um, in the early 2000s. Kix Brooks and Ronnie Dunn did a trip on jet skis from Nashville to New Orleans from charity. Really? I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, Brooks and Dunn. All right, yeah, I'm going to have to look that up. I wonder if it's on video. Surely it is. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> hey, I like Brooks and Dunn. They're all right. Nothing wrong with them boys. Let's see. Silver Stang 07 says, Daggum, I'm late. Got busy watching football. Silver Stang is okay if you're late, man. Uh, but I know you're watching football. Some people think football is just... So important, and you know what? Maybe it is, but uh, I didn't even know there was a game on. I don't watch football. I don't watch ball at all. So, anyways, all right, folks, take care. I appreciate y'all tuning into the reply line, uh, and I look forward to doing some more of these. We might even get another one in tomorrow because I'm off tomorrow and the next day. So, hey, uh, leave your notifications on, and maybe we'll see y'all in the next reply line. Thanks, everyone, for who, who was brave enough to drop their cell phone numbers in. Love talking to you. All right. Take care. Love y'all.